10 Minute Jazz Lesson Podcast, Episode 110. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson Podcast. Hope you had an awesome week and uh, excited to bring this episode to you on the great Sonny Rollins, one of my favorite saxophone players who's ever lived uh, and a true musical genius. We're going to bring you some really cool stuff today from his solo on Pent Up House. But before we get into that, let's uh, take care of a few housekeeping items. If you want to get the PDF for this podcast and every single other episode, 110 episodes worth of PDFs, uh, go to our Patreon website. That's patreon.com slash 10 minute jazz lesson. Or you can go to our website, 10 minute jazz lesson.com and follow one of the links that will take you over to the Patreon site. The PDFs are extremely, extremely valuable as companions to these episodes, and it's not very much money per month to support the podcast. This is a listener-supported show. It's only three bucks a month to get your hands on all of those PDFs. That's like years of work, at least two years of work, uh, for only three bucks a month, and your support really makes it possible to keep this podcast going. So big shout out to the people who have hopped on the Patreon train this week. Thank you to Daniel, Marquette, James, Tyler, and Ralph. Big shout out to all those people that have chosen to spend some of their hard-earned money every single month on this show. We really appreciate it. We will keep the episodes coming at you and hopefully keep them valuable and relevant to you. Okay, let's jump into today's episode. So as I was saying earlier, Sonny Rollins is definitely one of my favorite saxophone players and musicians. Uh, that I've ever heard, and I would imagine it's the same for a lot of you out there. I mean, the breadth of his work and his the uniqueness of his voice is really, really something special in the history of jazz, um, along with all of the other stuff that goes along with being kind of a legendary musician, uh, his mastery of the instrument, his mastery of music in general. But the thing that really gets me is that when Sonny Rollins makes a statement, he really makes a statement. And I think that's something that a lot of us get lost in. Uh, We get so caught up in, you know, all the stuff that we're working on, all of the like very, very particular sounds that we're trying to make, uh, trying to get the things that we're practicing to come out of our, our instrument when we're actually playing that sometimes we forget it's great to have personality in our playing. And if there's one thing you can say about Sonny Rollins, it's that he definitely did not lack personality, does not lack personality. You can really hear, like somebody like Coltrane or Miles Davis or any of those greats, in the first couple of notes that he plays, you can really hear that it's Sonny Rollins. It becomes immediately apparent. And then the other really cool thing is that even though that you know it's Sonny Rollins when he starts playing, it's unpredictable. The things that he's going to do on the instrument, you can't logically figure out exactly what he's going to do. And that's another mark of a really, really amazing musician is that they keep you guessing. They keep you really, really interested in their playing. Uh, They keep you kind of glued to your seat to hear what they're going to play next. And Sonny Rollins was really the epitome of that as well. So what I've chosen is a small excerpt from his solo on Pent Up House uh, from the great record with Clifford Brown, and it's, it's the beginning of his solo. And the thing that I think is really, really cool about this is that after he plays this statement that I'm going to show you, he plays a very bebop oriented solo. But I think one of the coolest parts about this first part of his solo is that it's very, very simple and he uses very, very long notes. So he uses these long notes that last multiple measures Um, and that's something that I think a lot of us don't do enough. You know, we're so concerned, myself included, with playing 
eighth note lines with a bunch of triplets in them and maybe doing some odd grouping of groupings of notes and things of that nature that we never explore the other side of things, which is how can we successfully play some longer notes or use a lot of space or something like that. And Sonny Rollins just demonstrates that basically he can do whatever he wants and his intrinsic um, musical sensibilities are really going to make sure that whatever he plays sounds great. So I'm going to play the excerpt of this solo. It's a very, very short excerpt, but I'm going to, going to let you hear what it sounds like, and then we'll pick it apart a tiny bit. So this is the part that I've chosen to transcribe uh, because it is the part that strikes me the most, and it's the opening statement of his solo. So first of all, you can hear his sound is just so, so compelling, the way that he plays those, those notes, uh, indicative of playing a lot of long tones and things to really master the tone of the instrument before anything else. And then the second thing that gets me is like, how often do you hear somebody hold out a note for that long on a fast bebop tune without just starting to kind of shred through the changes, right, with a bunch of eighth notes? Now, like I said, the rest of the solo is pretty indicative of a bebop solo with a lot of eighth notes and triplets and double time and all that kind of stuff. But it's a really powerful statement to start your solo like he just did. So he starts his solo, you know, on a 2-5 to the key of A major, and he literally just holds a B for the entire 2-5-1 progression. Most of us would be searching for, okay, well, how can I play my hippest uh, diminished dominant lick? How can I do a bunch of triad pairs, whatever? He just holds a note, and then he jumps down to the fifth over the A major chord and holds that note for two and a half measures going into the next 2-5, which goes to D minor. Then we hear him kind of interject with a little triplet thing, uh, which really kind of breaks that cycle of longer notes. And then for the next couple of bars, he does actually play some 16th notes and 8th notes. But then he gets back to another 2-5 that goes back to A major, and he starts just playing straight up quarter notes there. And those quarter notes swing so hard. And that's something I think that we don't think about a lot, right? How do quarter notes actually swing? It doesn't really make that much sense, but they do. So listening to Sonny Rollins play quarter notes is a great way to maybe model your quarter notes at a tempo like this over a swing feel and just try to get really, really inside what makes them feel so, so, so good. But I think the biggest thing is that this is not really a section of transcription to like really rip apart at a microscopic level. It's more of a macro level thing, right? Like we want to look at the statement as a whole um, and kind of figure out what makes it so cool and how can I get some of this into my own playing. So it's not going to be the type of thing where you're going through and you're, you're analyzing every single note and trying to figure out how it works over the tonality. In my opinion, this one's a, a little bit better to look at as a complete statement and start to think about some of the intangibles that make this uh, such a great excerpt out of his solo. Now, I know this isn't as specific as I usually get, but I think that's what's great about it, is that we're taking a week off of being really, really specific. And like I said, we're starting to look at something on a more macro level and maybe think about our playing in a different light, where if you're always thinking about your playing from note to note, from chord change to chord change, it could really do a lot for your playing to think about your, your soloing from chorus to chorus, even from tune to tune. Uh, stuff like that always has a great way of putting everything that you're thinking about in a different light, if that makes sense. Okay, so hopefully you found this useful. Make sure you grab the PDF because it's important to actually see this stuff in action. And then make sure you go out and you listen to this recording. Um, it is the 
one of my favorite albums of all time, uh, to tell you the truth. I used to listen to this when I was a kid all the time. It's called Sonny Rollins Plus Four. It's Clifford Brown, Max Roach, Richie Powell, George Morrow, and Sonny Rollins, obviously. Um, full of great tunes. One of the most classic albums that I own. Still listen to it a lot to this day. Okay, make sure you send me any questions that you might have, 10minutejazzlesson at gmail.com. Make sure you show your support for the podcast at patreon.com. Uh, only three bucks a month to get all those fantastic benefits. One of the best things you can do for this show, actually the best thing that you can do for this show, is to share it. Share it with other people that you think might be interested, might gain something from this. And another thing that you can do if you have two seconds out of your life and you don't mind going on to iTunes and leaving us a five-star rating and review, we'd really appreciate that. It helps get the show out to more people just like you that are looking to improve their jazz playing. All right. Have a great weekend, everybody. We will see you next week. Bye.